Hey folks, welcome to Weekend Technical Analysis Update by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This Weekend Technical Analysis Update is for Monday, December 27th through Thursday, December 31st, 2009. So we have another four-day trading week this week, folks, coming on the back of another four-day one last week. And again, last week we had that half day on Thursday on uh, Christmas Eve. This week there's a full trading day on Thursday, which is New Year's Eve. So again, four-day trading week. Last week was a half day on Thursday. This week will be coming into a full trading day on New Year's Eve, which is Thursday as well, and the markets will be closed on Friday. So I just want you all to be aware of how the market will trade this week, hours-wise. Now, going into a couple things, I'm going to discuss a bunch today. Uh, number one, I want you guys to go over, we're going to go over the Spiders chart on the intraday and 60-minute charts on the 10-minute and 60-minute. Then I want to touch on Amazon's chart. I want to touch on Apple's chart. I want to touch on Goldman Sachs's chart and JP Morgan's chart. We're going to cover a couple different charts here, maybe even Exxon if we have time, because I want to analyze them from a daily perspective to give you guys a little outlook into the end of the year and then what to look for in the early portion of 2010. Now, again, last week was a very stereotypical week for a holiday week, and those of you that are premium members know exactly what we mean by that. We talk about how the market generally floats up into a holiday because volume lightens up, and there's a general optimistic view going into a holiday, you know, whether it's retail sales for the Christmas season here, or there's other just kind of natural occurrences. And what we talk about there is there's institutions really go on vacation, folks. Aside from a little window dressing that you may see next week early on, which I don't think there's going to be much of, but again, you may see that. What you're going to look for going into a holiday just like this coming week as opposed to the same thing happening last week. You saw the markets again float up about half a percent a day. You have to go into next week with that same kind of idea. Half a percent move up per day, just neutral to positive bias. Now, I do think next week we will have one down day in the markets. Of the four days, I do believe one will be down, although it's not going to be a significant down day. All right, I don't think you're going to see, you know, 100, 200 point down day on the Dow. I think ultimately it's down 25 to down 50 points on the Dow, just kind of like a natural small pullback after such a move up this last week, which again, every day was positive and the Dow was essentially up 50 points a day or half a percent. Now, going back, I want to show you this is the 10 minute chart you're looking at right now. What I really want to show you is the 60 minute chart. Let's get right into it. What you can see from last week, folks, is the th four and a half trade, uh, three and a half day trading week here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday being a half day. The markets just sloped up in a perfect channel. See that channel right there? You take the high pivots here and connect them through, and you take the low pivots and connect it to the low pivots right here, and you get that kind of channel that just slopes up nice and, and steep, actually. And you can see the market just stayed there and continued to be propped up. Now that's a natural occurrence right there. Then generally in light volume, you will get that to happen. Ultimately, that's a channel. A channel Channels that have that angle tend to break down. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to break down next week. It may, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen next week. It could happen in the first week of the new year uh, in the, when volume actually comes back into this market. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But I just want you guys to be aware of channel trading. Channel trading that slopes up will 80 to 90% of the time break to the downside eventually. The question is when. And then on the same side, if you have downward sloping channels, and I'll draw just to kind of a, a give you a little example here. If you have something that's trading kind of like in and out of this, kind of up, down, up, down like that, eventually it breaks to the upside. All right, That's just the natural occurrence of things, how the market works. So again, going into next week, you have to say to yourself, well, considering it's a holiday week with light volume, light volume favors the upside or neutral status. You have to continue to have that neutral upside bias in the markets. I do expect of, of the four days at least one to be down next week. Uh, in terms of what to look for, you look for later in the week or in the early portion of the new year, a float to the downside. All right, I do think you might see a little bit of downside momentum coming in. Nothing major, again, as I said, anywhere from 25 to 50 point down point down move uh, next week, and then maybe a little bit more in the new year coming. Now, there's a lot of people pointing to an up move in the new year, saying, oh, well, you're going to have new money coming to work. I kind of discount that, to be honest, folks. Uh, once volume returns, the institutions will take over, and they're going to do what they want. A little bit of inflow of money is not going to make or break what the institutions want to do when the institutions come back to the trading table. Now, that does hap have an effect next week, absolutely, because there's no institution institutional participation. So, you know, a little bit of window dressing here and there can keep the markets floating uh, slightly on the end of the year cycle. 
Okay, but again, nonetheless, keep an eye on this. What you're looking for here, folks, is we're right into a major resistance. The market closed on the SPY at one of our master levels called the Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain, it did close there, and what you saw at the 112.50 level, which is the Iron Curtain, some good resistance. The market popped up above it intraday, then pop popped below, and I can show you here on the 10 minute, you can see it pop up, pop down, pop up, kind of thing, closing right at that level. That's a big point on the charts. Now, what I want to do is discuss a little more again. So now we've projected out to next week. Week. You're looking for choppy trading, neutral to upside bias, except maybe one down day. Is look, you're looking at one down day for the week, I would say, of the four days. You're probably looking at least one down day. Uh, again, not a major down day. You're looking 25 to 50 point Dow to the downside, uh, assuming no geopolitical. Should something crazy happen with Iran or, or another default situation, and they try to slip it in before a major holiday again like New Year's, then there's always the risk of, an, of a bigger down move of 100 to 150 points. But for the most part, assuming that doesn't happen, you go for the no neutral to upside bias next week. Again, with one down day next week, then you look towards New Year's after New Year's, then you look for a little bit more of a pullback in my opinion, coming in after the New Year's holiday. Not necessarily the first day back, not necessarily, you know, the first day back as volume will still be like that first day, but once you get to that midweek session, you should start to see some downside in my opinion. Now, let's talk about a couple other things, folks. I want to go to the Amazon chart. We said we'd touch on these charts, and we'll get into them. Then I want to touch on economic news overall as well. Uh, going to the daily Amazon chart, what I like about this daily Amazon chart, folks, is we called this out, and I gave this in one of the free videos before as well. What you can see here, folks, is you have a nice line, trend line, right from here to here and sloping up right into here. Now, you can see this was consolidating and then broke down, and then you retraced back up, and I made this call, and I actually added it to the ProTrader watch list on the back bearish side for our premium members and they got this call on uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday night going into Thursday that you would look for a little bit of a pullback in Amazon. Sure enough, the markets were up on Thursday, but just to show you how accurate these calls are that we make, you can see Amazon was actually down. So Amazon down 50 cents when the rest of the market was up half a percent. Pure and simple, it's based on the, on the technical analysis right here. So again, you look at this as being at some resistance. If it gets through this resistance line, the easy short is going to be right up here. I mean, just a simple point of interest right there double top short, that's a shorting opportunity. This is as well. So you have two lines to watch for, and you can pick your poison essentially there on the short on Amazon. Now, I do think Amazon continues to pull back. Ultimately, whether it does next week or not is up in the air. Could it get to uh, the 140 level? Yeah, you know, it's the 140 is the even number play as well. For those of you that are premium subscribers and know what the even number play is, then that's it. That's an obvious one as well, the 140. But it's right into that trend line, started to pull back. We'll see if it continues on Monday and, and see how that plays out. All right, so that's a little uh, idea on what to look for on Amazon. Taking a look at Apple, Apple just continues to inch up here. Apple had a nice day on Friday, folks, up almost $7. Looks like a little bit of an extension move on extremely light volume. Had a little more volume than the previous days, but look at the light volume the last three days of trading on the Apple chart. Very, very light, uh, and the market actually gave it a nice boost. Now, what you can see right here is that you're actually into a double top on Apple as well, so you have to look for a double, triple top resistance here. Although, again, you're coming into that last little portion portion of the year, which makes me also think that they could float this up uh, at least to 110, uh, 210, excuse me. You closed at 209, so that's only a dollar higher. Could it get to 210, 211? Yeah, it's very possible, but I think Apple is also nearing a point where you're probably getting a little too near-term extended. If you take a look at the weekly chart on Apple, very, very extended. I mean, look at the weekly chart, getting a little ridiculous. You're trying to break out to the upside here, but it looks to me like you're coming into that resistance point after a nice pullback. You're coming right into that. The question is, can it break through? If it does, I don't think it goes very far, personally. I just don't think so. All right, let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. Always fun to look at Goldman Sachs. Let's touch on the daily chart of Goldman. Now, this is the amazing thing about Goldman. Goldman and the financials topped out back in October, folks. And since then, they've really been in a downward spiral. In fact, uh, Goldman Sachs is $30 off its 52-week highs, which were made in October. That's impressive, considering the market just made new highs on Friday. To see the financials not participating, you have to start to wonder what is going on there. Now, if you want to look shorter term on uh, Goldman Sachs, you have to look at the near-term pattern here, which is actually slightly bullish. You have a slightly bullish pattern on Goldman Sachs. So you may see a little bit of an up move, and this may be what carries the market into next week and keeps it kind of neutral to positive if these financials can break up out of this pattern. See the up move in the sideways consolidation. That's an in-spirit of bullish consolidation pattern and has to be eyed very, very closely for that type of movement. All right, quickly touching on JP Morgan, do we see the same type of pattern? Because remember, you always want to confirm it with a different stock that's a leader in the financial index or any any sector. You want to look at one or two stocks you, at more than you're looking at to make sure that that move is kind of confirmed on other charts. Sure enough, you can see here, folks, look at that sideways consolidation, beautiful sideways consolidation. That has a popping possibility to that 50 moving average right up there. Beautiful 
beautiful inside bars off of that up move, and that's bullish right on top of the 20. So you have to look at the financials as being a possible uh, play to keep the market up next week. Well, maybe you see a little pullback in tech, as tech has gotten a little too far too, fa too ahead of itself here in the short term. Okay, let's take a quick look at Exxon as we kind of conclude. What Exxon's actually been doing here, folks, is actually making a slightly bearish pattern, but I think it still could trade sideways. And again, this is the bearish pattern for those of you that don't know pattern that well. This is all stuff we teach in the research center. But there again, sideways inside bars. And again, I think there could be a little more sideways to upside move in Exxon, though. So just be aware of that, is that it wouldn't shock me, even though this is a bearish pattern. The bearish pattern can continue up like this for a little while longer off of that move. It actually could go on for another week or so at least, which could tell us that they'll keep this market floating again next week as well into the end of the new year or into the yep into the end of the up into new years all right so just watch that again you'd have to look for more consolidation which would be sideways to upside bias on exxon as well based on this pattern and then possibly in the new year another breakdown on exxon mobile all right folks just to go over some economic news going into next week there's not a lot on the december 29th you have case schiller uh the consumer confidence numbers the 30th you have chicago pmi crude inventories and then the 31st initial claims and continuing claims very very light week next week uh, be ready for light volume, and, and again, with that, it kind of tells us that there'll be a neutral to upside bias. What I want to stress, guys, we have two hidden gems being premiered in January. We're going to get this uh, off to a kickstart.